Okay, let's go ahead and create a function to populate our list box. So we'll go into our project, global functions area, and we'll just go ahead and create our function here. So we'll put in some comments. So we'll say create a function to populate list box. Okay, so we'll declare our function, and I'm going to call my function get items. And then we'll just go ahead and start typing our code in here. The first thing we need to do is get our raw data from our database. So the way we do this is with an HTTP submit action. And the first thing we have to do to use that action is to set up a, a table of values to be passed to our PHP script. In this case, the only value we need to pass is action equals get. And that's going to trigger everything we need within our PHP script. Now we want to store the return value in a variable and we're going to go ahead and add our HTTP submit action using our wizard because it's a little easier to follow along. So we'll go ahead and click on the add action button and from the HTTP family go ahead and double click on the HTTP submit action. Now in the URL field you want to put the location of your script. In our case it's at localhost slash phonebook dot php. In your case it might be on the web or a network or what have you. At any rate that's where you type in that URL. Now in the next line here we're going to put in the name of our values table, which, if you'll recall, I called it my values. And then in the method field, we're going to leave it set to get method by default because we're not sending secure data. If you were sending secure data, you'd want to use the post method. To find out more about the differences between these two methods, uh, just go to Google and type in HTTP get method and HTTP post method, and it'll basically give you all the information you need. It just takes a few minutes to read up on, and it's worth checking out, but it's a little bit beyond the scope to explain right now. Um, so, okay, the next thing that we have here is our timeout. This is how long our application is going to try and connect to this URL before it gives up, just in case the URL is down or something. We'll leave that set to the default of 20. And the port, again, we'll just leave this set to the default. It's port 80, which is the standard HTTP port. The authorization and proxy data doesn't matter for this particular script, so we'll leave it set to nil, and we'll leave our result variable with the default name of result. Okay, let's press finish and we can go on with our script. Now what we've got is a variable named result that contains a single string which contains all the data from our phone book database um, delimited item by item with double semicolons. Okay so the next thing we need to do here is extract the first item from our string which if you'll recall is going to be a total. Um, we concatenate it on the total of all the items in our PHP script. So let's go ahead and get that first. And we do that by locating the first instance of the string delimiter, which in this particular case is the double semicolons. So we'll use a string find action and we'll look inside our result variable for a double semicolon. We'll start at character number one and we'll set it to be false for case sensitivity. Okay, so that's going to find the first location of that double semicolon in our main string. Now we can go ahead and create a new variable out of the characters to the left of that location. Okay, so we're basically extracting the first item from our main string. So our first item from our result string. And we do that by putting in our result variable as the um, variable to be extracted from. And then we're going to put my position plus one as the limit. So it's going to take all the characters from the left side of that string up until my position plus one. And we're using the plus one so that we bring the delimiter with us as we remove that. So let's go ahead and remove now our value from the main variable, from the main string. And we're going to use to do that a string trim left action. So from our result variable we wish to extract or remove rather our total variable. Okay, So it's no longer part of the main string. Now all we have to do is remove the delimiter that's contained in our total and we're ready to use that for a for loop. So we'll use a string replace action and we'll run that on our total variable and what we're going to do is we're going to replace all the instances of double semicolons with nothing which is just blank quotation marks and we'll set the case sensitivity to false. Alright, now we've got our total and we can start acting upon this data. Let's quickly put in a tiny error check here. Now this script we're writing is far from bulletproof. We're basically just writing a demo script and you would want to put in several error checks in any commercial script. But for the purposes of this project we're just going to put in this one quick one to prevent an error when we populate our list box and we'll say if total equals nothing then total equals zero. So it's going to assign that value to it. All right, so now let's go ahead and clear out our list box. We'll use a list box delete item action, specify the name of our list box in here, and use the flag of minus one, which tells it to delete all the items from that list box, not just a specific item. Okay, let's see, I'm going to go back and just comment that off for clarity. 
All right, now we've got our data all ready to use, and we can go ahead and set up our main for loop. So let's go ahead and type in for count equals one, because we want to start from item number one, and total will be our total, because we've got the total number of items now in this variable named total. So we'll type in do, and then we'll put in our end statement here, and we can go ahead and just add our code in between here. So it's going to loop through and do whatever code is inside this statement here, and it's going to do that for as many times as there are items in the string. Okay? So if we've got 10 items, it's going to loop through 10 times. If we've got 20 items, it's going to loop through 20 times. And each time it loops through, it'll do the code that we type in here. So what we've basically got to do here is the exact same thing we just did to extract our total, but this time we're going to use it to extract our current item. Now you could write a function to do this instead of repeating the code, but since it's such a small script, I figured this would be just a quick way to do it. So we're going to look inside our string variable for the first occurrence of that double semicolon. We're starting at character number one and we'll set the case sensitivity to false. Now we found that location of that first delimiter and we can go ahead and extract the characters to the left of that again. So we'll use a string left action and we're going to use that on our Oops, there we go. We're going to use that on our result variable. And again, we're going to go to my position plus one. So that's going to bring the delimiter with it. And then we will extract that, or remove it rather, from the main string. So we've got our result string, and we're going to use a string trim left function again. And we're going to remove from our result string, which is our main item string, the current item. So it's no longer part of that string. All right, so it's identical to what we did with the total variable. And of course, the last thing we need to do is remove the delimiter from our current item uh, variable. So we're going to go ahead and use a string replace action. And we're going to run that on our current item variable. And we will replace all instances of the double semicolon with nothing, which is empty quotation marks. And we'll set the case sensitivity to false. All right, now we've got our item. We've got our text. We're ready to add it to the list box, right? Well, not exactly. The, ne the next thing we need to do is create a label for this item so we can keep track of these items as they come off the main string of which ones are names and which ones are numbers because they're coming off the main string in alternating pairs of names and numbers. So let's go ahead and create a little math function here to do this. So we'll say if math modulus and then what we're going to do inside here is divide our count by two and we'll say if that math modulus does not equal zero then do the following code. Okay, so basically we're just checking to see if our number is odd or even by dividing it by two and checking to see if there's a remainder. Okay, so it's nothing too sophisticated, but it works really great to toggle actions like this. So if it's odd, we want it to set up a label of name. So we'll type that in there. Else item data equals number. Okay, so for the even ones, it's going to set up a label of number. Okay, there we go. We've got our little labeling system in place and we can go ahead and add the item to our list box now. Okay, so what we need to do here is use a list box add item. Action and we'll, we'll specify our list box in here. Then we'll specify our item text, which is current item, and then our item data, which is going to be the corresponding label for each item. Okay, the last thing we need to do, and this is basically just purely cosmetic, is select the first item by default. So we'll go ahead and use a list box, select item, action, and then we will specify our list box, which was list, and the position, which is number one. Okay, so we're selecting that first item by default. Alrighty, let's quickly review what we've done here. We've created a function to populate our list box. We've declared the function get items, and we've extracted the raw values from our database by using an HTTP submit action and storing the return value into a variable named result. And then we've gone through and extracted the first item from the left of that, which is our total, as concatenated on in our PHP script. Then we've set up a little error check here. We've cleared out our list box. And now we've set up a loop to loop through our string and extract the items one at a time, label them, and add them to our list box. And finally, we've selected item one by default. So that's our function to populate our list box. Let's go on to the next video where we will set up a couple functions, one to add items to our database, and one to delete items from our database.